family and friends, welcome. Today we are here to worship our God, to find hope, sustenance, and courage for our journey together. The worship team and I are here to offer our gifts and our comfort to you in a time of great need. We know that God leads us and be with us will never leave us. Today our worship leader is Susan Cryer. Welcome to Sunday, October 31st. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The memorial service for Peggy Crim will be held today here at the church. Calling hours are from 2 to 3.30, followed by the service at 3.30. The service for Bob Stephanides will be held here at the church on Saturday, November 20th at 11 a.m. and the burial service is private. Loretta is still collecting money for Crop Walk. It's virtual this year and um, the collection is coming to the, to the end at the end of October. And finally, we want to thank everyone who purchased Boscow sale passes from the Women's Guild. Um, they collected $245 for their efforts.
all Holy One, source of all life and ground of all love, we thank you for your love that never lets us go. Thank you for the privilege of gathering in this space with these your people, our friends and neighbors, to worship you. We do not come merely to open the doors of the church, but we come that our hearts might be open to you and to one another. As we worship you today, help us to respond to the call of love, to love you, our neighbors, and ourselves. May we be transformed from individuals to members of your one body. We pray for our nation, that we be united as a people, tied to a single garment of destiny. We pray for those elected officials who serve all citizens, that they may be guided not by ego, politics, or money, but by compassion for all people. Guide us as families, as a community of faith, as a nation to follow the path of love. Amen. You urge us to seek you first. 
We long to trust the path of love for you and our neighbors as ourselves. You urge us not to lean in our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you. Yet at times, we forget to observe your statutes of compassion and your ordinances of justice. Forgive us our lack of action and our trespasses, Lord. Forgive us our sins. My dear ones, Jesus promises his abundant grace and forgiveness. And so, I ask you, hear the word of God for this season and all seasons. Do not be afraid. I will never leave you or forsake you. Know that our God, who began a good work in us, is able to complete it. As we open ourselves to the Spirit of God, may we see more fully the wonder of God already at work within us. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is found in the book of Ruth, chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elamelech. His wife's name was Naomi and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orphpah and the other Ruth. After they lived there for about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left with her two sons, without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Our gospel today is found in, the, in Mark chapter 12. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? 
The, po the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. We have heard God's word. Let, it tre let us treasure them in our hearts today and always. <coughs>
When she first went back, there, it's called the meeting, and when the people will cut the wheat, they leave a little bit there. It was something that was ordered to them in the religion of the Israelites to leave a little for those who had none. And you see, Ruth would go each day and take a little and take a little. And it was said that she was still fairly young and beautiful. And Boaz noticed this lovely woman who kept following along, taking a few items of wheat. And he said, who is that? And why does she do this? And we'll learn more about her in the coming weeks. But her devotion and her love and her humility really was very special. And you know, we're a family here at the manger. We're friends, but we're part of the family of God, brothers and sisters. And we're called to love one another in the way that God loved us. We're called to love one another beyond what we can sometimes say is comfortable. Being a Christian is not so we can be comfortable. Being Christian is not just because we want to go to heaven. Being Christian is because we're called to follow the orders of Jesus Christ, which is love one another as I have loved you. It's a tower. It's a very tower. But we do the best that we can with the humanity within us, with our weakness, with our gifts, with our strength, with our hope, with our courage, with our pain. Look at our family here, Dennis, April, and your husband, Ted. They're here with us this morning, loving us the way God will love us. On a very difficult day, they came to be part of our family today, and Dennis doing his work, as he always does, to help make the video for those who can't come, to be present with us, to walk hand in hand together. The story of Ruth and Naomi is such a powerful story of friendship, a family beyond blood. It's commitment. As Christians, we have a commitment to one another. It's not just a convenience or comfortability. It's a commitment. I will love you the way Jesus loved you. Now, sometimes when I do that, people think, oh dear, that's just too much. <laughs> But that's what he asks of us, my friends. Not just to our biological family, but to one another. Ruth and Naomi had a long-standing love and relationship. That it was a familial relationship, but not genetic. It was a special relationship of love and appreciation. I understand that romantic relationships and marital relationships are a very strong bond. But there are many kinds of relationships that we have that also can hold big power in our lives. And I do think that sometimes the world itself doesn't always give the value it should to a friendship. Friendship where we can feel safe, we're unconditionally loved, or revalued and encouraged. And of course, that should be happening in any kind of romantic or marital relationship. But there are responsibilities there that occasionally affect the ability to love without condition. But a friendship should be without condition. And as Christians to one another, let us love one another without condition. When we have our weak points, our mistakes, our failures, we will. We are asked to forgive one another also. Jesus forgave, and we are called to that. And that's a big part of being a Christian. Forgiveness is huge. Courage, forgiveness, compassion. And throughout all my years of doing ministry, people ask me, how is it that you love again and again? even though perhaps you are hurt by someone or the world in general. And what I say to them is, I forgive in three different ways so that I can continue to love. I forgive others 
for what I wish they would have done differently. Now, it can take me a long time sometimes, but I forgive others. I try to forgive myself for my feelings because they are going to be there. I will never be, they will never be over. So I forgive others, I forgive myself. And this is a funny one that you might think, oh, but I forgive God for what I wish could have been different. I have to surrender and forgive and say, why did you let that happen? Why did that person have to die? Why did that terrible thing have to happen to that child? So, forgiving the other, myself, and God. Why? It's because love requires it. Love goes beyond. Love goes to an unconditional place where we're called as Christians to accept one another even with our faults and our weaknesses and accept God's plan even though we may not feel we can or we want to. Jesus showed us that. He didn't want to die on the cross, but he surrendered it to his Father and said, not your will, but not my will, but yours be done. And sometimes when we can't forgive, take the word and give it forth. Forgive, give forth. So when I can't get there and it's blocking my ability to love, I give it forth and say, you take it, Lord. I'll do my best to love one another while you change us. Jesus did not say, change one another as I have changed you. He said to us, love one another as I have loved you. It's a very beautiful, simple statement that takes years to truly arrive at. You are loved, you are beautiful, and Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen? Amen.
Father gives, the gifts from our hearts to show how we love our neighbor. We come to you with sincerity, hope, courage, that you will guide us and never leave us. Help us to release our fear as we give our gifts, knowing you will always guide us and lead us in our life through storms and through beautiful times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We learned that Mary and I, our mothers, are from the same town, Freeland, VA. Oh. <laughs> it's a little time to tell you, okay? Thanks, Mary. Before I begin the prayers for the people, it's always an interesting thing to learn that Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. I wonder why he had to remind us to love our neighbor. I think he knew we would love our families, our children, our parents. But to love our neighbor often is harder because they're different, a little more different. In different country, different place, different religion, we're called to be good neighbors and loving one another. So when Mary and I found out that our mothers were both from Freeland, we knew we were even beyond neighbors. We came from the same town. Right, Mary? My dear ones, let's take a moment now to bring God our prayers, to have the conversation that we long to have with the Lord. Let us take the time. Sometimes our weeks are difficult and challenging, and sometimes we even avoid a quiet moment with the Lord because it might be too difficult or painful. We all are carrying different burdens today, so let us take that moment to rest in the arms of our loving Savior. Let us take that moment now. Look, where are you going to get the music from? <laughs> on your heart. God has placed there that you might be the one that loves them the way he does and ask for that help and between you and God together. We can lift any burden from another for God is the changer and the lover and we also love with him together. So we lift down in prayer all those who rest on our minds. Heavenly Father, receive our prayers, bring the healings, bring the hope, bring the new beginnings, bring the possibilities that you promise us. Help us to release our fear, our anguish, our sadness, our grief. Help us to know that you go before us just a breath away. Those who have left us in your company are walking with you as though on the road to the maze, just fit before us, making a way for us to continue on in safety and hope. And at this time, we rest, we ask that you carry our beautiful Peggy Crim, our special Robert Stephanides, up into the heavenly arms and gates of heaven. And for Joseph Mitch, who is in hospice care, who is also part of a major family, and for all those who are suffering in some way, those that we know, those that we know, there are many who suffer and we do not know. Perhaps here today there is some suffering that we are not aware of. And so we lift that. We lift our children and our essential workers, our teachers, our government, our soldiers, help us to vote in the way that is best this, this week, Lord. There are so many prayers we could say. We pray for our children, our grandchildren, who 
are coming into this world and leading as young leaders a world that needs so much. Help them not to despair. Help them to know you go before them and you inspire them. Bless the other churches that we share a building with, our community, our state, our country, our world, our own hearts. And we thank you now for the forthcoming blessings. For we pray in total confidence that you will keep your promises and answer our prayers as we knock on the door. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the flowers today are placed in honor of Peggy. And Peggy helped me every week with the flowers here, especially throughout the pandemic but throughout all the time I'm here, in here, in the back, and outside. So the flowers definitely are special from her, from heaven today, sending you love, sending you beauty, letting you know she's with you, she sees you in spirit, in the community of saints, in the community of saints. We are never separated from those whom we love, only, only physically. And now, my dear ones, let us say the Our Father together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and Amen. Amen. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you, you are mine. I love you, you are mine. Go out and be the love that encourages. Be the love that Jesus asked you to be. Connect with him. Stay close to him and stay close to one another. Do not be afraid to reach out. Do not think that your suffering indicates a lack of faith. You are human. Reach out to one another, my dear ones. Reach out and you will find the hand you need. And now, that was your commission. I give you a benediction. I'd like you to stand with the benediction today. <coughs> The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. And the presence of God watches over you. So wherever you are, here or in the heaven, all is well. You are loved. Jesus loves you dearly, and so do I. Go in peace now and serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.